Good morning, everybody, and a blessed Easter to you all. Today is the strangest Easter day that we've ever known. We're very aware as we celebrate Christ rising from the dead that we're living in a world in which there is much suffering. And yet, part of Easter account of the Easter first of the Easter day, as that we'll be reflecting on later in the address. Is around the fact that it began in darkness and the whole events of Easter remind us that God knows what it is like to suffer because of Jesus and God is alongside us in our suffering through Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit and so because of the events of Easter because Jesus rose from the dead we are not alone as we journey through this time. We begin with proclaiming Jesus is uh, uh, with, with the phrase, Alleluia, Christ is risen. So we proclaim with, uh, with joy uh, that fact that Christ has risen from the dead. And the response is, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God. As we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. In a moment, we're going to sing our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Uh, during this hymn, I meant to say that you might like to have bread and wine to receive when we get to communion. Uh, it won't be consecrated, although I will be consecrating it at this end on behalf of all of us. But uh, if you would like to do that, you might like to uh, pause, your, pause your recording and uh, go and get some bread and wine and then continue uh, by singing this hymn. We're now going to light an Easter candle. Normally, if we were in our churches, 
we would be bringing in the large paschal candle which we did first lit at the dawn service uh, from the Easter fire and we would be processing that within into the church. We can't do that today but we will have a paschal candle and celebrate when we're all able to gather together and worship again. But today I'm going instead to light the renewing hope candle which Bishop Nicholas gave us a few years ago because it is through Jesus our hope is renewed. So may the light of Christ rising in glory banish all gl darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be the light of the world and to bring to your people the radiance of your glory. Set us aflame with the fire of your love, that with pure hearts and minds we may come to the feast of the everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to a time of confession. When we say sorry to God, so let us just pause for a moment and think of all those things we need to say sorry about. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not in the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in christ our lord amen we say together the words of the gloria glory to god in the highest and peace to his people on earth lord god heavenly king almighty god and father we worship you we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our collect for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through your, the, resur the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin, and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, by whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praised, and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen.
I invite Barry now to read to us our epistle, bring us to our epistle reading. The reading comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. The Gentiles hear the good news. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God has chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one a appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Barry. We now continue with our second hymn, In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. How nights of love, what depths of deep. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, who shook on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, his gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. Every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Thank you. 
in life through fear and death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I am the first and the last, says the Lord, the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> our gospel reading is from John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Early on the Sunday morning, whilst it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they've taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple started running for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings laying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. For until then, they hadn't understood the script, what the scriptures had said. Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb, crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head, the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? the angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they've put him. She turned to leave and saw one, someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognise him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Whom are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go and find my brothers and tell them I am sent ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, 
as we reflect on these Easter readings, on these accounts of Mary on that first Easter morning, may we know more deeply how much you love us and may we know how you are with us in all the circumstances of our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And just getting the screen ready for me. Thank you. So firstly, a question for all of us, perhaps for younger people who are watching in particular. I wonder if you've been sad when something you've enjoyed has come to an end. I think back to my childhood birthday parties. I used to get so excited about them. And I used to look forward to all of my friends coming round. I remember one in particular where, where my mum set up a fish and chip shop, supposedly in the garden, and all of my friends came and enjoyed in it, joined in. And then, so quickly, I was waving goodbye and they went home. Perhaps you like sleepovers. Perhaps you've had lots of friends round, like the picture you see in the middle of the screen. And in my experience, when our boys were growing up, sleepovers uh, didn't really mean much sleep. It meant lots of chatting and perhaps watching films through the night. And then they're over. Breakfast is had and people go home. And what about holidays? And this is one for grown-ups as well. We go off, we plan our holidays and we look forward to going. And I know at the moment we can't go, but we plan and we go off. And I remember digging uh, on beaches, particularly making great big uh, dams uh, and trying to stop the tide getting over them. And then eventually, of course, the tide would win. But then... Of course, all too quickly, the holiday would come to an end and I'd be in the car going home. I wonder what things you're thinking of that you've enjoyed. And I wonder how you felt as they came to an end. But there is good news in this, because when good things come to an end, we often find something really good is left. So for example, after a birthday party, very often people bring presents. And um, after, the, after everybody's gone, the next day you might well be enjoying playing with the presents that you've been given. It may be if you've been on a sleepover, uh, your friends invite you for a sleepover at their house later. And you can look forward to that as well uh, and think of the things that you've enjoyed in one sleepover and look forward to the next one. And for both adults and grown-ups, once, uh, sorry, both adults and children, as Anne's reminded me, uh, after you've come back from a holiday, you can meet up with friends and perhaps youngsters might like playing football or going off and doing gymnastics or whatever it is you can do us home. Sadly, it is a good thing that uh, we have good memories that come out of things where we're sad that they come to an end. One of the things that we tend not to think about very much, but I'm more aware of this year, is that actually, whereas Easter is a time of celebration, this, the account we've just heard from, from John's Gospel doesn't actually begin with joy. It begins with sadness. Because Mary was deeply sad. She was grief-stricken because her friends and her teacher, Jesus, had died. And what's more, he'd not just died. He'd been arrested totally unfairly, tried... Uh, in a trumped up way and then flogged and put to death. She thought he was the one who was going to be 
a saviour. And she was really sad. All her dreams seemed to have come to an end. She'd been with crowds of people as she sadly stood by the cross, seeing Jesus suffer and die. There were loads of people there, some of whom sadly even being glad he was dying. But, Jesus, but Mary on that Easter morning comes to the tomb on her own, isolated and sad. And you can see a picture of her there, approaching the tomb, all alone in her grief. And then it seemed as if things had got even worse. The stone, which she was expecting to see covering the, the, the cliffside grave, had been rolled away. She was frightened. She was even more sad because she thought somebody had taken his body away. And she ran off to tell her, her friends, the disciples. And sadly, of course, this is how many people are this Easter. Many people are lonely. Many people are frightened. Many people are sad this year because of coronavirus. People have lost loved ones. And I think many of us are in positions where on Easter Day would have loved to have been with family and friends and we're not able to be so. But Mary's grief was not the end of the story. She went back to the tomb, stooped and looked in, and through her tears, she saw an amazing sight. There in the tomb were two angels, one at the foot and the other at the head of where Jesus' body had been lying. Mary still didn't know what was going on, but this was the first sign that something amazing had happened. And even in our current crisis, there are signs of amazing things happening. We see the sacrifices and bravery of the NHS staff who we're clapping every week. We're seeing the compassionate care and support of people for one another in our villages. We're aware of cleaner air, birdsong and lower pollution in our world. And Mary's Easter didn't end with sadness. Her grief was not the end of the story. For she turned to leave and met a figure who she thought was the gardener. And she asked if he'd taken Jesus away. It was only when Jesus said her name, Mary, that she recognised him. She was filled with new hope and rushed to tell anyone who would listen, I have seen the Lord. And the good news of Easter is that we too can have new hope because Jesus has risen. Because Jesus has risen, we are loved and accepted by God just as we are, with all our strengths and our weaknesses. We can know that God is alongside us in our fears. We can come before him and ask for his help when we're sad or when we're stressed. And we can know that because Jesus died and suffered, suffered and died on the cross, he knows what human suffering is like and is alongside us when we suffer. That's part of the message that we think of when we're also proclaiming Christ is risen. And if you go to our churches in Semington or Hilperton or at St Mary's, you'll find on Easter morning and in the beginning of Easter season, the words marked out in stone, Christ is risen, a reminder that although the churches sadly are closed, Christ is still with us. Christ has still risen. Christ is present with us. And you can see our experiment in marking out stones saying Christ is risen in the picture on the screen. Now that's our practice on the rectory floor. So we're not going to leave them there throughout Easter. The good news is that Jesus calls each of us by name, 
just as he called Mary. Just pause for a moment and think of your own name. And think that Jesus calls you by name. Jesus loves you more than you will ever imagine. Jesus wants you and wants me. Jesus wants all of us to listen to him, to follow him. And we can do that in the silence. Perhaps in these days when a lot of us are, uh, are at home with time to spare. Just come before, just wait in silence and ask God to speak to you. And it's often in the silence that we can bring before our concerns and our failures before him. And we can know that we are forgiven. We are forgiven because of Jesus, as our reading that Barry read to us from, from Peter's proclamation at Pentecost uh, tells us so clearly. We can know Christ's peace sustaining us through this difficult time and indeed others we have in our lives and what's more we are all promised that when we follow Jesus that we will rest in God's presence when our earthly lives are over we have new hope both in our lives while we live on earth and indeed going with us taking us to be with God when eventually we die. The Christian message is as a message of hope. The Christian message is a message that light is stronger than darkness, that love is stronger than fear. And the more time we spend in worshipping Jesus, the more time we spend praying to him, and in studying his word through scripture, the more we will know that in our lives. May God bless every one of you this Easter. May the knowledge that Christ is risen not be something that you just proclaim in your mouths. May it be something that today and throughout this Easter season you know in your heart. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We come now to a time when we renew our baptism vows. And we can remember that we are indeed called by name at the time of our baptism. Those who are baptised are called to worship and serve God. Will you continue the Apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers? With the help of God, I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak and seeking peace and justice? With the help of God, I will. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism so that 
and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. May God Christ dwell in our, our hearts through faith. May we be rooted and grounded in love and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Now, I'm not familiar with the practice in Canal Side, but certainly in my last church, at this point, everybody would have been sprinkled with water from the fonts. Maybe that's something we can all enjoy as a part of our coming back together again in the future time. I now invite Anne to bring us our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Saint Augustine of Hippo is credited with saying, we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. We will use these words as the response to our prayers today. We are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. Risen Christ, the grave is empty and you are alive. Your light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. May your light shine in our hearts in the dark days we are currently in. May we know your peace in our hearts and the joy which comes from knowing that you are alive forever. We are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. Risen Christ, as we celebrate Easter this year, we are so aware that it is so different to usual. And Alleluia might not be on our lips so readily today. We may be separated from our family, our friends, our church family, and it is painful. We are worried about the situation we find ourselves in when the ever-present threat of coronavirus lurks everywhere. Yet, Lord, your resurrection does bring us hope. Help us to put our anxieties aside and celebrate the joy of your resurrection today, wherever we are. Fill our hearts with gratitude and love for all that you have done for us, for nothing can separate us from you. We are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. Risen Christ, you rose on Easter Day for everyone. We pray for the world at this time, and especially for those countries where coronavirus is sweeping through communities, bringing fear, illness and death. To people who are helpless in the face of its power and medical aid is minimal or non-existent. Be with them Lord and with those who are doing all they can to help them even when it is dangerous. May they know your risen power and peace and be able to say we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Risen Christ, through your death and resurrection, you conquered death and promised to be with us to the very end of the age. May these words be a comfort to those struggling at the moment, to those who find isolation particularly difficult, to those who are working so hard to provide us all with essential services, often in difficult and dangerous circumstances. To those who are ill and dying. To those who are worried about a loved one or grieving the loss of a loved one. In a time of quiet, let us bring to the Lord those known to us in particular need of our prayers today.
May they feel your presence close to them this Easter day, that they might be able to say, we are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. Risen Christ, you rose from the dead that we might live. We praise and bless your glorious name. Alleluia. Amen. We now come to the peace. And when I introduce the peace and say, offer one another a sign of peace, do think of those who you would have loved to have been able to share the peace with. And in your mind's eye, uh, as, as we gather to, as, as we would have wanted to gather together as a Christian community, uh, Imagine those who we would have shared the peace with. Imagine those uh, further away who you'd have wanted to share the peace with. And we'll just share a virtual peace today. The risen Christ stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Let us, in our mind's eye, offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful work. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resounds with gladness while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Michael, Mary, George and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's creation, we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Do join together in the prayer you'll see on the screen. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts are unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he might live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. And now I invite you to, if you have taken bread at home, to take it in your hands. And I'm going to, when I receive, when, when I give the words prior to distribution, use the word us on the, on the basis that I'm sharing the consecrated, receiving the consecrated bread on behalf of all of us and any of us who would have wanted to share the Easter communion today. 
the body of Christ broken for us. And now I take the cup of wine, the blood of Christ shed for us. We pause for a moment in thanksgiving. Let every one of us remember that Christ is with us. Today, when we're going through difficult times, but in all of the circumstances of life, and that in due course, when we can gather together in our churches again, we can share with one another the joy of the risen Christ and celebrate our unity once more. And now I invite you to join together in the, in the post-communion prayers, which you'll see on the screen. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And we now have our final hymn, which is Vine Be the Glory. Say 
And we now come to our final blessing and words of dismissal. And may God be with you uh, throughout this Easter day, Easter season, and until we're able to meet together again. Know that you are very much in our thoughts and in our prayers. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you, and all who you love and pray for, this Easter and always. Amen. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia.